While I was on vacation last week, I came across this solar installation. The 10 plus acre Kuia solar farm located in Lahaina, Maui is a 2.87 megawatt installation that is part of the 34% of renewable energy portfolio for Maui County. Apart from these large solar farm installations, Maui also has 12,000 rooftop solar systems. And even though these tropical islands are ideal for renewables, in particular solar, in California, where I live, it seems like every other rooftop has solar panels. Take a look at this picture of my neighborhood. All of those are solar systems from just one solar vendor. So if we were to add all the systems from all other companies, it almost is every other home. So since it appears solar is so prevalent, at least in many places in the USA, I decided to do a quick look into my entry level or beginner's one year old solar system. All right, let's talk about my solar system. I haven't done an update on this guy in a while. It's changed a little bit. I added more panels, so now there's a total of 10 panels. I believe there are uh, 136 watt rated panels, right? They're like 24 volt, but they really go up to like 40 or something like that. So those run all in parallel and they run into this box here. So you need this key to open it. Here we go. And here we have a solar grid tie inverter, right? And this is tied into the grid uh, and it's making, it's getting the DC voltage and turning it into AC. All right, before we get going, let's explore how a basic grid tie solar system works. The grid usually comes in on power poles. Three conductors in the USA, two hot and one neutral, typically called split phase. The way you get that is this way. Electricity is transmitted in high voltage, usually in the thousands of volts, but once it gets to your neighborhood, it goes through a series of step-down transformers. That's a big iron core with windings on it. The high voltage comes in on one side and the low voltage comes out the other. In this case, the secondary winding has a center tap. So even though it's a single phase of 240 volts AC, by using the center tap, you can get 120 volts AC, which is a standard of household voltage that all or most of the small electric appliances work with. So that's how you get a neutral and two hots. Now those three conductors come into your main panel just after going by the meter. The neutral usually goes straight into a distribution terminal block while each hot leg is arranged in this manner. 120 volt AC circuits are wired like this using circuit breakers. This circuit grabs energy from the first half of the face while the next one grabs the energy from the second half and they alternate all the way down to evenly load both halves of the face. Now, if you need 240 volts, typically needed for large appliances like stoves, dryers, air conditioners, and like electric cars, for example, you will need two circuit breakers next to each other. That way you are connected to both hot legs. Now in a grid tie solar system, the inverters are wired in a similar fashion as any other appliance. Small inverters typically take energy from the solar panels and then convert it to 120 volt AC and will feed one of the face halves. If there is an appliance needing power on that same circuit, it will take that energy before it could flow back into the grid. If the consumption exceeds generation, then 100% of the solar energy will be consumed by your appliance. But if the solar generation exceeds your consumption, then any surplus energy will flow back into the grid. Most solar installations in the USA are exactly like this, a standard grid type type. They either use multiple small inverters called microgrid tie inverters or one main big unit that either feeds each of the face halves or just the hot legs at 240 volts AC. The affordable grid tie inverters that I'm using here typically operate at 120 volts so that you can easily plug them in into any outlet. But the challenge here is that you might be pushing power into a face half that doesn't have any load on it causing all the solar energy to flow into the grid. So that's why here I recently changed from two 120 volt AC inverters to a single 240 volt AC one. And right now it's putting out 362 watts. 
right earlier it was doing about 500 sometimes it does I think I think it around noon it around noon or 1 p.m. it actually does over one kilowatt right which then this runs at peak so uh, what I have here going is this separator here what I did is I put a uh, fan in here right because in order to keep these lasting a long time you got to cool them and they have an internal fan it grabs air from here and it pushes it out through, through over here through the top so of course I couldn't close this right uh, because then the air would just recirculate in there and it would heat up uh, and it would just you know kill the unit so what I did was I put this I'm trying this little um, partition here because you have to create just like electricity you have to create a circuit uh, of air so here's this fan that is running off the, the solar power so if there's sun out then this uh, fan is going to start spinning right and circulating air so what it does it, it I put two grills up here and it sucks air from here and hopefully it's gonna allow for this to grab cool air from here and then it goes through the unit here and it pushes it out and hopefully it's going to go over here and then push out through this side um, when you close it you hear a flow Okay, so let's talk about how the energy management typically works. Most grid tie systems work like this. Every day as the sun comes out in the early morning, the solar panels begin producing energy. They start slow, and as the sun gets higher and higher in the skies, energy production increases until it reaches peak production for about two hours. It then starts tapering off until the sun sets in the horizon. Typical solar production looks something like this. The challenge here is that most Americans go to work during the day and their consumption looks something like this. A little bit of activity in the morning and then pretty much base loads right into well past the afternoon when they get back from work. Grid tie solar systems produce all their energy when most people are not home to use it. And it's creating all kinds of problems for the grid. Here in California, there's too much energy during the day and not enough during the evening. Researchers call this drop in demand the duck curve. So why did I install this type of system, you ask? So I have a couple of reasons for this. Unlike most Americans, I work from home and my retired parents live with me. So there's always someone here using energy. My typical energy consumption looks something like this. Here I have my base loads. These are appliances that are always on refrigerators, modems, printers, timers, etc. Then there are the intermittent appliances. I have a pool water pump that runs for four hours every morning. We have a couple of electric cars that charge at night. Here's the AC in the summertime. And then all the random stuff we use during the day. Fans, computers, TVs, toasters, all that stuff. My current system is around 1000 watts. When you overlay production versus consumption, you can see that it's just the right size to take care of the base loads. And even though this might seem insignificant, when you take into account that because I am on a time of use pricing scheme, energy costs about four times more from 12 noon to 6 p.m. So each kilowatt hours consumed here costs around 10 cents but here it's 50 cents. And in the course of 12 months, my little one kilowatt system has produced around two megawatt hours. At 50 cents, that's around a thousand dollars that I didn't have to pay my utility company. And since this is a $1,500 system, it means that my return on investment is well within two years. So my system is just the right size to be affordable, to have a short ROI, all without sending any energy back into the grid, which would add to the surplus solar energy problem. Now, the second reason to experiment with grid tie system is that the ultimate goal is to add energy storage in the form of a battery that will allow me to increase the overall size of the system to say a factor of five and store it in the battery until it's needed well into the night. 
that will allow the system to not add energy to the grid when the grid doesn't need it and not draw any energy when the grid is struggling to keep up with demand. And that right there is the ultimate plan to not be part of the problem, but instead be part of the solution. If every solar system in America had energy storage, the grid would be able to handle the ever growing demand for years to come, all while homeowners saving money. A perfect win win scenario. So that is my little system. That's where it's been and that's where it's going. I hope you found this video useful. If you feel inspired, join me in this revolution. Start your very own DIY project. You can start slow like I have been doing. It has never been easier. I partner up with companies like BatteryHookup.com that are giving us access to use and surplus lithium batteries of all kinds. Solar inverters, soon hopefully also solar panels. Another partner is offering us brand new premium cells for those that require only the best. Also, I have designed a whole system to easily build raw cells into battery packs. Stay tuned for many future videos of my builds using this system. All right, with that, I say thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. As you guys know, it's time for me to get some solar going in this place. What? Yes, they're here. Next, the panels. All right, so here we are. Two good looking panels. Thank you.